don't always know who or what we want until it's on screen in front of us delivering lines. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for another top 10 surprisingly good casting choices in movies. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're looking at actors who were cast in films against popular opinion, but who won over critics and haters alike. If you think we've missed something, be sure to check out our first video on the subject. I cannot stand by while innocent lives are lost. If no one else will defend the world from Ares, then I must. I have to go. Number 10. Elijah Wood as Frodo Baggins, The Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring. If the only requirement for playing the heroic hobbit of this franchise was that they be small in stature, you'd think that a lot of actors would have fit the bill. Sure. Baggins. But that would leave them here. Who goes there? Take it, Captain. Take it. No problem. You must take it. But it was the relatively unknown Elijah Wood who ultimately got the role. Like Viggo Mortensen as Aragorn, Elijah Wood put on an accent throughout shooting. In the end, Wood brought Frodo Baggins to life expertly through all three Lord of the Rings films, capturing the Hobbit's journey gracefully. It's gone. The success of the franchise made Wood a household name overnight, but strangely, Wood has never again had the same on-screen blockbuster success, often going the more indie route. I swore to protect you. Can you protect me from yourself? Number 9. Anne Hathaway as Selina Kyle, Catwoman, The Dark Knight Rises Selina Kyle is sleek, sexy, formidable, and playful. Anne Hathaway is, well, not the first actress to come to mind when you list those characteristics. There's a storm coming, Mr. Wayne. You and your friends better batten down the hatches, because when it hits, you're all going to wonder how you ever thought you could live so large and leave so little for the rest of us. At least that's what most people thought, but as was the case with Heath Ledger before her, the casting department of this franchise knew something that we didn't. Girls gotta eat. Man, you have an appetite. Why would you run? You can't hide from us with a record like this. Maybe it's not you I'm running from. Hathaway had made a name for herself playing the geeky girl next door in movies like The Princess Diaries, but she surprised us all when she showed us that she could be dangerous. Our apologies to Anne Hathaway, as she has since gone on to consistently surprise us with her ability to play drastically different characters. I think maybe you're assuming a little too much. Maybe you're being unrealistic about what's really in your pants other than your wallet. Ouch. Number 8. Chris Pratt as Peter Quill, Star-Lord, Guardians of the Galaxy. Burt Macklin, Marvel superhero. Yeah, doesn't have a great ring to it. Goofy everyman Chris Pratt was never pegged as superhero material. Ooh, child, things are gonna get easier. Ooh, child, things will get brighter. Then bring it down hard! If you wanted someone to have a small role in your sitcom and occasionally tell a goofy joke, he was your guy. Maybe it was his shockingly good turn as a Tier 1 Navy SEAL in Zero Dark Thirty, but someone somewhere decided that he was perfect to play Star-Lord. Listen to me, you big blue bastard. Take those headphones off. That's mine. Those belong in Impound, that tape, and that player is mine! <laughs> and they were right. Pratt, alongside his band of goofy renegades, made Guardians of the Galaxy the funny, awesome smash hit that it was. Yeah. Me. Number 7. Jim Carrey as Truman Burbank, The Truman Show Old rubber face and an emotionally penetrating tale of personal identity in the face of modern media? All righty then. You ever think about that, Marlon? Like your whole life has been building towards something? In 1994, Jim Carrey was in three movies, The Mask, Dumb and Dumber, and Ace Ventura Pet Detective. HDS, sir, and how are you this afternoon? All righty then. Yeah, all in the same year. Basically, before 95, he had cemented himself as the goofiest comedy actor of the decade. The Truman Show was Jim Carrey like we'd never seen him before, and he played the character with an emotional nuance and naivete that was thought impossible from an actor who, in one role, literally talked out of his rear end. In case I don't see ya. Good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Number 6. Robin Williams as John Keating, Dead Poet Society Already a veritable comedy legend thanks to its film and TV roles, Robin Williams played very much against character to take on the role of John Keating. 
In this film, the professor inspires his students to break out of their molds and become something unique and extraordinary. We don't read and write poetry because it's cute. We read and write poetry because we are members of the human race, and the human race is filled with passion. Medicine, law, business, engineering, these are noble pursuits and necessary to sustain life. But poetry, beauty, romance, love, these are what we stay alive for. Speaking of unique and extraordinary, Williams captured the character with a majesty and delight that made him practically leap off the screen to inspire us all to stand on our own desks. Just when you think you know something, you have to look at it in another way. Even though it may seem silly or wrong, you must try. Robin Williams would surprise us with roles again and again, eventually leading to his Oscar win for Good Will Hunting. You'll never have that kind of relationship in a world where you're always afraid to take the first step because all you see is every negative thing 10 miles down the road. Number 5. Arnold Schwarzenegger as the T-800 Model 101, The Terminator When director James Cameron conceived the world of The Terminator, the idea was that the machines were infiltration units designed to go behind enemy lines and blend in with humans. You're close. Give them to me. Now. So, an Austrian bodybuilder didn't exactly fit the bill at the time. Cameron felt the same way, too. And his original plan was to pick a fight with Schwarzenegger so the studio wouldn't force them to work together. You can't do that. Wrong. Instead, he couldn't help but become lifelong friends with the future governor. And Schwarzenegger played the steely machine with a rugged coolness only he could pull off. I'll be back. Number 4. Jennifer Lawrence as Katniss Everdeen, The Hunger Games Fans of the Hunger Games novels were more than a little peeved when it was announced that Jennifer Lawrence would be bringing the book's heroine to life. Grim! Grim! I volunteer! I volunteer! I volunteer as tribute! The novels describe Katniss Everdeen as olive-skinned and dark-haired, and although her race is never mentioned, many pointed to Lawrence's pale skin and blonde hair as a clear example of whitewashing. Thank you for your consideration. Like the subjects of Pan Am, though, Lawrence won over her audience as she utilized her acting talent to bring the brave teenager to life with subtlety and poise. The film and its three sequels were massively successful, in no small part thanks to Lawrence's portrayal of the lead character. So what happens when we get back? I don't know. I guess we try to forget. Number 3. Johnny Depp as Jack Sparrow, Pirates of the Caribbean, The Curse of the Black Pearl Fans of the Pirates of the Caribbean franchise may be surprised to learn that Johnny Depp was not always considered the perfect choice to play the film's roguish supporting hero. Me, I'm dishonest. And a dishonest man you can always trust to be dishonest. Honestly, it's the honest ones you want to watch out for. Because you can never predict when they're going to do something incredibly stupid. In fact, the screenwriter originally penned the script with Hugh Jackman in mind, and Robert De Niro was offered the role. While Hugh Jackman would later get a shot at playing a pirate in Pan, Depp ultimately claimed this captain's role, making it his own by drawing inspiration from rock star Keith Richards to bring the now iconic pirate to life. Pa, snip, pa, sleep, pa, partner, partner. Parlay? That's the one! Parlay! 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 Down to the depths, whatever mutton they thought of parlay! That would be the fringe. Not only was Depp's performance memorable and amazing, it was also wholesomely unique in a way that no other actor could have delivered. This is the day that you will always remember as the day that you. Number 2. Harrison Ford as Han Solo, Star Wars Episode 4 A New Hope. Boring conversation anyway. Luke, we're gonna have company! Picture it. It's 1975, you're casting a new little movie called Star Wars, and you say you want Harrison Ford to play a character. Everyone says, who? Yes, I bet you have. Granted, Mark Hamill and Carrie Fisher were also unknowns at the time, but considering Kurt Russell and Al Pacino were strongly considered for the role, and both of them were big names at the time, casting a relative unknown was a pretty risky maneuver. Look, your worshipfulness, let's get one thing straight. I take orders from just one person, me. So one day you're still alive. Will somebody get this big walking carpet out of my way? No reward is worth this. It paid off big, though, and launched Harrison Ford to his status as an icon. 
Hey, Luke. May the force be with you. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. I'm a Catholic whore, currently enjoying Congress out of wedlock with my black Jewish boyfriend who works in a military abortion clinic. So hail Satan and have a lovely afternoon, madam. And you know what they call a, a, a quarter pounder with cheese uh, in Paris? They don't call it a quarter pounder with cheese? I oh, mean, they get the metric system. They wouldn't know what the fuck a quarter pounder is. And what do they call it? They call it uh, a royale with cheese. Hank McCoy, Secretary of Mutant Affairs. Right, right, the secretary. Nice suit. Henry, this is Logan. He's Wolverine. Um, I hear you're quite an animal. Logan's talking. I want to be free of this pain. I know what I have to do, but I don't know if I have the strength to do it. Can you help me? Dad's in there! Ooh! Shh! Ooh! Dad in there! Shh! Honey, shut up! Number one, Robert Downey Jr. as Tony Stark, Iron Man, Iron Man. For you 90s babies out there, you may not believe us, but there was a time when RDJ couldn't get an acting job to save his life. Please don't follow me around with it either, because I feel like I'm going to catch on fire spontaneously. Just stand down. If something happens, then come in. After substance abuse tore his life apart and a small stint in jail, the producer of 2003's Gothica refused to give Robert Downey Jr. his whole paycheck until the filming was complete. When it came to casting Tony Stark, Jon Favreau was insistent that Downey was the best choice. Not only was he perfect for the character, but he would also elevate the film. There is nothing except this. There's no art opening. There is no benefit. There is nothing to sign. There is the next mission and nothing else. Favreau was right, and RDJ's performance paved the way for one of the most successful film franchises of all time. The truth is, I am Iron Man. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.